gotta do it. I don't do this shit. No, I want the whole face. You can do that. What do you want? Just literally everything white down below. Any uh, pregame jitters, pre-speech jitters? Nah. I stopped having those after I had a bad speech one time. It's not even scary anymore. The message is going to be about remembering where we were seven years ago, where we were two years ago, and now where we are now. Okay, can you repeat that again? So D, so... Yeah, I'm gonna be replacing the tens. And then, so yeah, it Well, actually, you could... Right. But you need to start getting started on them. As soon as people start coming in, you get pretty ahead. Oh, I'm, we also have to be worried about... We have too many moves. at least a third of like, hold people back from playing a ten up. I hope they don't do that. So we have our seat selection set up for the first seven rows. This is just in case we get further than seven. We only filled up to like three rows last year. Is there like an estimate on how many guys you're gonna get this time? Um, we're thinking 1,100, 1,200 around there. Correct. So row is one, two, three. That's like a session. One through thirteen, correct. And then for row ten or for row nine, excuse me, you have one through thirteen as well, correct? And you, yeah. No. Nittanyville, to keep it kind of simple, is a tent city that camps outside of Beaver Stadium for every home game. Uh, normally, we camp out on Wednesday night, um, and all the way through until Saturday morning. Um, we do so in order to receive front row seats. So we'll, we'll actually choose our seats um, on Wednesday night and we actually put together a little uh, sign-in sheet and we actually send that over to ticketing. And basically all campers have to do is continue to camp out from Wednesday night to Saturday morning without missing tent checks and their spot is reserved for Saturday morning. And at the very least, if you hate your time there, you at least get really good seats for the football game. So I'm the president in Nittanyville. Uh, my role and my responsibility is basically to be the liaison between Nittanyville and all of its activities and athletics, and marketing, and ticketing, and Beaver Stadium operations. So basically everything you see at Ninnyville uh, runs through our coordination committee, and I head that committee. Hi, how can I help you? Need a spot? Just, yeah. Yep. All right, hey, you guys are good to roll. My whole family's gone to Penn State. Uh, grandparents, and aunts, and uncles, and my mom and my dad met here. Uh, but my dad was in the military, I was actually a military brat. So we travel out around a lot, and I'm actually went to high school in Alaska. Um, but as far as being familiar with Penn State football and being familiar with Nittanyville, I had a pretty good understanding before I was a freshman. Um, so once I was here, I knew I wanted to at least camp out once or twice. Um, but then once I met friends and things like that, I wanted to be around. It didn't take me very long to be hooked on it. I only applied to Penn State. When I was a junior, my mom was like trying to get me interested in other schools. Like, hey, at least you know, take visits other places. But in Alaska, we had to wake up four hours early uh, for football games. And so when I woke up at 3 a.m. for the, uh, the game in Ireland, at that moment, my mom looked at me at, you know, at 4 or 5 a.m. whenever she got up, and she's like, you're not going to go anywhere outside of Penn State. OK, I got pattern, uh, nah, bah, bah, bah. I don't know. No. So Nittanyville was something that I knew coming into Penn State uh, that, you know, students camped. And I wanted to get involved with that, and I knew that if I joined camping or whatnot, it would be a community for me. And uh, it really turned into one. It's really an amazing time, and when I when I got involved with it, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. We actually, me and my friend Jake, as freshmen, we went to you know the first opening meeting with Nittanyville early on freshman year, and we decided right away, hey, let's do it. And we went to Walmart that night, bought a 10-man tent. But the actual game itself sucked. Um, it rained the entire time, the entire time. We weren't sure if we still wanted to continue to do it. It was a San Diego State game where we sat front row and it was actually a nice day. And when we sat front row for the San Diego State game and we were in like everyone's picture, I think that was the moment when all of our friends realized like, hey, this is actually really cool. There's a huge difference between sitting front row and sitting fourth row. And that's really when we got hooked on it. 
Now the only other reason that it mattered a lot to us is because at this point in the season we've already began to build relationships with people and it wasn't even so much about sitting front row. Darian Summers, the president at the time, uh, basically took me under his wing. Corey walked up freshman year to gate A and was annoying a little bit, but in a good way. He has been a little brother to me and I tell him that all the time and I remind him that, but I'm extremely proud of everything he's done this year and, and you know he's really done a lot of hard work and to get where he's at. Yeah, Corey's a funny guy and, and he and he does a great job managing and he's clear and he's direct. Hey, listen up real quick! If your tent is in this section, come talk to me right now. We're trying to spread him out a little bit more. Coming to Penn State, I said this is definitely something I want to do. I have a group together and each time we take shifts and uh, it's really become a family. The group uh, has really gelled together and we've had a great time throwing footballs together, playing cards, and then just outside of my tent group, we have a large community here that I've made some friends and uh, gotten to see some football games with. It's really fun. Thank you. So you guys need to spread out first, and then we're just kind of going to spread you out a little bit, not right on top of each other. Yeah, yeah, yep. What? I think we're pretty much good here. We moved some of the ones over there to here. Okay. There's a couple in the back that are pretty smashed. Like if you, you All right, I'll talk to them. It doesn't. We're just trying to get more tents to be visible. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. If you guys are cool in a corner, I'm not gonna force you to move in the rain. You should have said something. How many? When's the last time we had a group come? Are they these people now still coming, yeah, or did they already put their tent up? People coming a couple times. Okay. I don't think we're gonna get the record though. I think we're like 100 people short, 200 people short. I think. I mean, the record is 1,200, which was set in 2012, and I, the reason that number was so high, we think, is because of the unity that wanted to be around that team at the time. My freshman year was the year that they they broke the, we broke the record. It was 1,200 campers exactly. It was it was awesome. That was that was still something I'll never forget. Corey did a great job this week, but there were tents on tents on tents. I mean, it, you could not walk through Nittanyville that week. It was cool that students showed up, up for that game and, and, and really said, you know, hello, we're here, we still care. We had kind of pinpointed this game a long time ago because when we kind of sort of figured out that Corey was probably going to be the president this year, we were like, hmm, he could probably do it if we're still as good as we were the year that we won the Big Ten Championship. We kept saying to him, you're, I, we think you're going to do it, we think you're going to do it. We think you're going to break the record, you know. There's really two factors. There's one, the football team being good. We have that solved right now. The other big thing is the weather. And that Monday, you know, it poured this Monday. I've never been one that wanted to, you know, break the record. Like, we didn't put out any promos for it. We didn't, you know, do any videos or anything like that. Um, we are going to put on the best show, whether there's five tents out there or there's 120 tents out there. Right. Come on, you guys. Oh, God. I'm good. You good? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> That's my president! <laughs> Check in, do a little bit of dancing, have a drum line, and then we're gonna call it a night. We should be done about what time is it? 9.24. It's 9.24 right now. And Michigan still sucks. Michigan. Yeah. Alright, let's get it going. You good? You wanna get down? Yeah. We are Penn State! We are Penn State! So listen, hey, I'm gonna play a quick. Like, I'm Campers, raise your hand. Woo! Freshman, raise your hand. Yeah. Right here. Um, 
I just realized one thing. You're not going to know if I'm spitting it because it's raining. It's like, you don't know if it's different. <laughs> <laughs> no drugs. No alcohol. <laughs> but seriously, about that real quick. As we mentioned, that camera out there, I mean, it's a live feed. Like, it's going constantly. That's not supposed to scare you. Like, we want you to do some, like, back crazy stuff around here. Like, don't boot it. Do whatever you want. <laughs> but this week especially, just know that we're under the microscope. And media, no fun is patty, will do everything possible to get that one bad apple, especially with Penn State students. If you do not show up for a tent check, and we have them whenever Corey feels like it, you have 15 minutes to report here and explain why. I know you're someone here is like, it's not gonna happen to me. It's gonna happen to you, I promise you. <laughs> we are moving you back. So if you're front row, see you later. <laughs> see you later. On Tuesday, tomorrow, movie night. I think Blindside has like a 50% lead right now. Yeah. I will not wear that Cotty orange. <laughs> Tuesday's really easy, because we want you to study and get good grades. Wednesday, we start getting a little bit more lit. Yeah. But on eight or so, we're having our annual men's basketball teams coming up, our annual dunk contest. Thursday is the day that you're gonna really wanna be here. Like, tell all your friends, tell your mama, tell your dog, it's gonna be lit! Be fresh. After that is our annual trash can football tournament. Yeah! We got all sorts of people coming on Friday night. It's going to be crazy. So make sure that you're there for that as well. You just want to do We Love You at one time and then... Yes. Uh, yeah. Save that for later. Okay. So, we're going to circle it up, sing it on the monitor, then you're going to go get your group numbers, one person. Stretch it out! to make it the most challenging environment in the history of college football on Saturday. On the field, I want it to be the most difficult environment in the history of college football. And that is all 110,000 fans standing up, screaming, yelling, going crazy. If you haven't experienced a, a Penn State football game, and specifically a whiteout, it should be on your bucket list because you know, I've been doing this for 23 years, and it's 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 uh, it's special. Thank you very much. Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Appreciate everybody coming out. It's a motto we go by here at Penn State, and you truly feel it. It's loud, it's deafening, and for James Franklin to really enjoy the atmosphere and, and really push it upon himself to promote the atmosphere, I think, I, I think that's awesome. They say it's surreal, it's unreal in the stands, there's nothing like it, and that type of passion you just don't see anywhere else. People have been camping outside of Beaver Stadium for football games since the late 70s, sporadically eight, you know, in the 80s and the 90s as well. There was a little bit more of it um, going on and people would just kind of sort of camp out occasionally um, for games to get front row seats much like they do now. And then much like this year where there's a big Ohio State home game against Ohio State, I should say, um, that, that 2005 Ohio State camp out was really when it all started um, with everything. It wasn't truly until 2005 when people started camping out for every game. 
chaos, basically. Like it was, there was no organization to it. It used to be that they would start camping out Sunday night sometimes. So they all start camping out, you know, completely unorganized. Your tent wasn't there. I've heard of stories where people actually picked up tents, passed it, like each group behind it, then passed it behind them all the way to the back of the line so that that group didn't get front row seats that game. We called that the Wild Wild West days. Media people start coming up there, you know, well, you guys are all camping out, like you guys have a name. What is, what is, you know, what do you guys call yourselves? Basically, if you look at the papers, the, the Daily Collegian that week, it says students started camping out at Camp Nittany. Apparently, the students that were camping out kind of got together and, and said, let's give it a different name. Um, and so they gave it Paternoville. And then if you look in the paper later in the week, it says Paternoville. And that's kind of the first iteration and, and kind of the first time it's written down anywhere. Obviously, at the time, it was because Joe was the football coach, but it was a little bit of an homage to Krzyzewskiville at Duke. Very much similar thing. They camp out for, for basketball games down there to get good seats at, at Cameron Indoor. The university kind of comes to the students that were in charge. There was a quote-unquote mayor at the time, and which is now basically what the president's role is. And they kind of came to him and said, hey, listen, it's fine if you want to do this, but you need to have more organization. So from 06 on, they began to become organized. Hey, let's work with this out. Like, how can we do this the right way? And they said, hey, if we govern ourselves, if we you know, write rules and make people follow those rules, is there a way to make this work? And athletics said yes. It was tough. I mean, it was never an easy time around here, and it was a lot of, you know, questioning things that were pillars in your life. It was awkward because sometimes you would wear Penn State stuff and you didn't know if that was okay. I, I still wore Penn State stuff because I was still Penn State proud, and, you know, everybody says this, but Penn State is more than just a football school. It's a world-class institution, and that's what it was about. I, I also, at the time, wanted to be a, a journalism student here and knew about that and uh, you know that was really what drove me here as much as Penn State football was just my taste my, my appetizer and then everything else was the main course I guess if that makes sense um, and then I'm not sure the exact conversations that happened but after 2011 um, there was a little bit of a, a dispute with you know the officers at the time on whether or not they should leave it especially with the former officers the students themselves, a lot of people think it's the Board of Trustees or the university. It was the students themselves kind of said, okay, well maybe we should re change the name. And it wasn't because they were disrespecting Joe Pa. It was more so this organization was never about one man. Even back when it was Paternoville, it was about supporting the football team. It was just happened to be called Paternoville. What we do outside of Beaver Stadium has more to do with Penn State football and Penn State pride uh, than just one single person. When, when some of the older alumni that didn't camp out and never really took part in this organization, a lot of them are very vocal on Twitter and Facebook. When, a, when any publication posts about Nittanyville or Nittanyville posts about Nittanyville or the football team posts about Nittanyville, I think you mean Paternoville is what they like to say. Um, so I think uh, when you look back at it now, Nittanyville is going to always stay as Nittanyville. It's never going to become Jamestown. It's never going to become, you know, Paternoville again because it's not about one coach, no matter how successful and how large of an impact they made. It's about, you know, what we do and what we uh, show off to the rest of the country, what Penn State's all about. They voted on it and Camp Nittany was actually the runner up and then Nittanyville, which is what it is now called after the, the scandal happened. Um, you know, that's the name now and will probably be the name forever. So. <laughs> What can you say about the Nittanyville tradition? Yeah, it's 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 really been cool. Um, 
something I'd never really experienced before coming here. You know, football is important here, and I think it's important because of, you know, it's one of those things that brings a community together, and that's at the high school level, college level. I'm biased as a football coach. I, I believe that football brings communities to get together like nothing else. When I go out to high school football games, which is one of my favorite things to do, you see all the cars parked down the side of the road, people walk into the game, and there's no Catholic or Jewish on Friday or Saturday nights. There's no black or white. There's that team, th that, those teams' colors and that community, and, I, and that's special. Fumi and the girls are going over to deliver cupcakes. starting in about 40 minutes, 35 minutes or so. I'm doing it, I'm 5'4". Well, can't get any shorter than him. Probably haven't reached out enough to Kyle as maybe Darian did to me, uh, but I know Kyle is also super busy. He's a COD major and he's already has internships and things like that. The things that are similar is he has ambition. Yes, I am in the dunk contest. I don't know, I can barely, barely hit the hoop. So we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna be going first. Has that ambition he has that drive and that he's always out here and I think those are the first you know the, the groundwork to what makes somebody you know want to become a president want to you know have a special impact at Nittanyville. That means so much to me because you know he sees something in me that I'm passionate about it I, I take charge I have some initiative and and that means a lot to me from someone like him. But it's cool to hear that that still happens because that's really important to keeping the organization growing. Without that the organization dies off you know people aren't just people aren't interested in being president or being in charge, there's no leadership here. There's, this doesn't happen. So. Me and my buddy's playing with the Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter jersey. And we were going to do the very first dunk where he threw it on the ground, went between the legs, but the balls were flat. So he couldn't do that. So then my plan kind of just went whack and I didn't really know what to do. So we just kind of winged it. Rodney Barry, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a day for me. Let's go with our first dunk from Noah's the basic, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's your first round, Noah. You'll get a second round after Rodney goes. With his first round in the final. He's uh, he's pretty tall and like he's just super athletic and. Uh, he does these snap stories pretty much every day where he just does crazy dunks, so we, we already knew it was pretty much in the bag. Like... Yeah. And did you expect to win? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know how many athletes were going to be here. All right, we tallied the votes. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out here in the middle of this too. The winner 
of this beautiful TV and the 2018 Mindyville Dunk Contest. Ladies and gentlemen, Rodney! like one of the biggest and best things you've ever done in your life? Oh, yeah. For sure. 100%. 100%, ladies and gentlemen. 100% best thing he's ever done in his life. Thank you, Snail. Making you wait. And they stay there. And they stay there. Hashtag blackout. Hashtag failure. Yeah, hashtag Cincinnati Bearcats come back. Down by 21 yeah, against Ohio Bobcats. Can't, can't put that knee. Oh, huh? perfect. Yeah. No. Shoulder. Thank you. Good job, Mitch. Thank you. I'm also very proud of you. Oh, praise the Lord. I didn't die. Doctor. Praise me. Doctor. doctor. We didn't doctor. need a doctor. doctor. We didn't need a doctor. doctor. <laughs> Is everyone going to be here tomorrow night? Okay. Wait, I want to do a tent check. Right now, or like 1030. I mean, we can do it later before you leave. When you, are you leaving? I'm going to be here for a while. Oh, okay. Let's do it at like 10. Let me just tell you like 15 minutes before the leave. I do not know how Corey has time to do any of this. He's like, yeah, I've been studying for, and it's like 4 a.m. He'll, he'll text our group chat and say, oh, I'm studying. And it's like, do you sleep? He should be proud of that. He, you know, managing his time is something that is probably so much more difficult for him as a senior, you know, getting ready for his career path. Corey handles it like a champ, and you wouldn't know that he was a, a bio major that he is. Uh, biochemistry and molecular biology, but I'm, I'm also minoring in astrobiology. Actually, my, my GPA is actually usually better in the fall for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I think it kind of keeps me into a schedule. Um, I, I have a PCHEM exam that I have to uh, prepare for for tomorrow at 9, and 9 a.m. Um, I also have a uh, around a 15, 16 page lab report that's also due on Friday. For this exam, I don't want to you know, stay up till 3 or 4 a.m. I'd rather get rest. So I'll probably call it quits around 1 or 2 a.m. if I need to. One of the worst nights I had at Nittany was the night I had to go to East because my computer died. Um, it was too cold to like for my hands to work. So I was up till like four or five a.m. just typing an essay that was due the next the, the, well that morning, I guess. I've been camping out every single night since freshman year. I've been able to balance that with my major and my minor, along with you know doing a lot of other things and a lot of other research opportunities that I've been given. And so it's possible to do both. I mean, I think. You know, the student athletes, you know, manage it quite well, and it's no different for us. We just have to be able to, uh, you know, choose what's important to you. You know, if Nittanyville's important to you and school's important to you, then you have to give up, you know, a couple, you know, Thursday nights at the bar or whatever the case may be. All right, we're rolling. Let's do it. A few more minutes as we get ready for this uh, special greeting tonight. Are you ready? Are you getting ready? I just want some shakers. Have fun. Knock them down.
Man, what you guys do for us and, and just the community itself, it's, it's, it's special, man. There's not a lot of places like this in the country, and I like to believe it's the best one. So, so thank you guys from behalf of all of us. You know, we it was such a great atmosphere here. Uh, they all came to support Nittanyville and spend their time. And it was an amazing, amazing day. It's really nice. As the years go on, and you just you kind of just fall into it. It's almost like a trap. I hadn't 100% decided I was going to camp out every single night. It just kind of just happened that way. But by the end of sophomore year, I was an officer. I just kind of helped out a little bit. I was running for a VP against somebody else. I lost the election. And at that point, I was like, fine, I'll have a lot more time on my hands. I'll just, you know, enjoy myself a lot more. I don't need to be involved. All right, the rules of trash can football are simple. The first team will try to get the balls into the trash can one at a time. And actually, our advisor, PJ Mullen, was like, no, you're, I'm not letting you not be a part of this. Um, and he actually made me stick on as an officer. If a ball happens to hit the front of the trash can and bounce towards you, you can run and try to pick it up and then try to punt it into that trash can. Does that make a, a lot of sense to everybody? The VP, I'm still not understand sure what happened to him. He never came back to Penn State, never heard anything. Um, and so before the season started, we actually had to like vote him out and then vote me in. The loser, the very first loser of the night will be going home with a number nine <laughs> Eagles Christian Hackenberg jersey. That's really when I basically um, basically started thinking that, you know, Nittanyville's my family and I, you know, basically have to take care of everyone who's there and I guess the rest is kind of history from there. It's honestly such a great time. Yeah, the athletic competitions have not been on my side. Dunk contest, I thought I did okay, but this, this uh, trash can football tournament, I just got blown out. Like, that was a smearing. I I'm embarrassed. Unfortunately, you know, our team didn't make a big splash in the tournament. We got out in the very first round very quickly. But it's all in good fun and what a night it's been. So it's a hundred percent chance of rain right now. One down. Yeah, so you get like a video, you're going, it's wrong. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be 100% rain till about 3 a.m. So. I texted Corey this earlier in the week. The Thursday night of the week long is the trash can football tournament, and it's really the biggest night of the year, and you work really hard to plan it and all this stuff. And I said, take five minutes and soak it in. And that was something that it was passed down for me, that advice. And that was really important because that, those five minutes that I just took and just relaxed for five minutes and soaked in were, were a lot of fun and meant a lot to me. I think there's gonna be some downpours tonight. Um, so thank goodness it's not my shift. I had the downpours on Monday. That's the life of Nittanyville and, and you're just gonna have to adapt. So, you know, get good clothes and get better prepared because it's gonna be a tough night. What's going on? This is Corey Lestokey, president of Neville. Just kind of got settled in my tent. It's about two in the morning. Um, got all the other responsibilities done, kind of, you know, put away camp, make sure all the electrical things and all that's taken care of, especially with how much water we have. Uh, it's getting a little close to flooding as far as walking around and your, you know, your shoes just being, uh, being wet. But, um, but inside the tent, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of damp things going on the inside, but all in all, it's it hasn't flooded or anything like that. But when you you know have rain for basically the last four days, <coughs> it's 
it's definitely uh definitely making an impact on people at least mentally as far as you know being exhausted and just kind of ready for the rain to be over um i believe this is the last day of rain hopefully so we shall see on that but otherwise we're just hanging in there probably get some rest now I think um, to see that, that you know the weather, it's raining, people's tents are flipping over and these, these people are still out there because they just are so passionate about being there and, and being a part of that night. It's special man, it's, it's what college football, it's what makes to me a story about what makes college football what it is. And this has been as good an environment for the show as we've had since I've been here and I'm hoping that we'll have a sea of white out here on Old Main Lawn on Saturday morning. No, Corey doesn't relax. Um, Corey gets a lot of that from me, I think. A part of that is he gets nervous about the games just as much as I did. And so that, I think that's him just not wanting to think about the game. Now, PG version, because we got some video recording. <laughs> So what happens if you forget your wristbands tonight? You're screwed! You guys are the great tonight. For all the newbies, just remember, well, I'm up here tomorrow, and I'm not really sure what I'm saying at that point. Whenever I pause, just start yelling. My senior year when I was president, it wasn't bittersweet. It was being in the moment type thing and still enjoying the moment while you had the moment. The bittersweetness probably didn't come until the new president was elected and it was kind of like a slap in the face that I'm graduating, I'm leaving Penn State, I don't have this access, I don't get to do this cool thing anymore. Every year I come, came to at least one home game um, from the time I was in the womb until I was like 16 or 17. Freshman year was, was definitely the year though that, that I got welcomed to Nittanyville and kind of found my home. Like everybody buys a new TV, a new computer for college. I bought all of that, plus a new tent, a new chair, um, some tarps and a sleeping bag because I knew it was something right from the get go I wanted to do. The people that I am still friends with and the people that I'm seeing this weekend and I see every other weekend, I met them during freshman year. And it's, it's just cool to have that, um, you know, camaraderie and, and, and family, you know, together. Treat each and every one of them with respect. Oh. We know what it feels like to be disrespected, to be called names for things we had no part in. And I do not want to see a single one of you doing that to them. We are better than that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you. At the alma mater, right here as fast as you can. We are intense. We are one team, we are Ben State. Got it, let's do it. Darian Summers was the president of my freshman year. Since freshman year, he's kind of just been the guy who's looked after me and given me advice whenever I needed it. All the way to like yesterday when I've had to ask him things about Nittanyville. Without Darian basically pushing me and you know saying, hey, you're coming to this, hey, you know, you're gonna be a part of this. Um, you know, you're going to be president one day. Like, without him pushing me and, you know, being there for me, I'm not sure if I would actually still, you know, be here right now. I camped out for Nittanyville all week, so I'm sitting second row in the game on Saturday. You're with all your friends, and like you get great seats for the game, and everyone just goes nuts, and you're in like the heart of the student section. And it's great, we just get a ton of activities, and I'm hoping to do it every home game for my four years here. Basically right now, we just got done with the drum line, took our tents down, I'm hopping in my friend's car, we're heading over to college game day. We're gonna stand there basically from midnight to nine, and then we're just watching the show. How much caffeine are you on right now? <laughs> Not much, I'm just had one cup of coffee.
So I'm heading over to my dorm to change into my white apparel, and then I'm going to head over to college game day, where I'm going to basically wait in line until they open up the gates at 6, and the show eventually starts at 9 a.m. Uh, I did actually take a power nap um, this afternoon in preparation for this, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be enough, so hopefully I still have some adrenaline in me by the game. Uh, I've waited for this moment a really large part of my life, uh, and so I'm just so pumped up. I can't wait. The official whiteout. Now we're ready to roll, if we weren't before. I mean, camping out in the rain and the cold just for a football game, I don't know. It's like he comes back like early in the morning really tired, but other than that. Here we go. Here we go. Got the white hat. Got the uh, white bag. I might even... Oh, this, the socks. The socks are blue. This is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Did a lot of football, for sure. It's like... Oh, like a different level of like walking football, honestly. I haven't worn these once yet so far this year. They're supposed to be my dress shoes, my mom is telling me. But uh, we're breaking them out for this game. Yeah, I'm getting a little nervous because I'm getting a little tired. I, you know, I, I, I want to get in the pit area for college game day, get near the front row, uh, and I'm just overall nervous for the game. It's going to be a very close game, and there's no guarantee Penn State wins it, uh, but oh, I just got to do my part and, and make some noise, but there's, I'm just getting nervous overall. It's going to be a crazy 24 hours. Honestly, we obviously want Penn State to win, but at the end of the day, Nittanyville and this community that I have gained. It's about the dunk contest. It's about meeting the players the, for the basketball team and the football team. It's about the memories. Nothing starts at 9 o'clock. You got nine hours. Right. Yes, sir. Did you fall down, bumped your head somewhere? Nope, didn't fall down. <laughs> Not under the influence. Right now, I am a diehard Penn State fan. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that, but I knew I'd do something else for nine other hours. True, I don't blame you, but I want to get that <laughs> front that row. Front row, front row. Hey, yeah. go at it. Yep. It's not necessarily about football. It's more than football. And, and what a week, whether they win or lose. Good dedicated crew here came in at midnight. I would just sit here for nine hours. I'd say 20 people are here. Um, 20 crazy enough people like myself. I think at this point, I, I feel good knowing that my friends are here and we're, we got each other. So I think we're going to make it. I also have my five hour energy inside my bag. All right, it's uh, about 2.40 and it's extremely cold now. The line is filling up and uh, it's exhausting. It's my turn to take a seat at the bench. We're taking ships, taking seats. It's still four hours till we're even allowed inside the pit and then three more hours until the show starts. It's 3.40. We have some people saving our spot in line. Uh, but as of right now, we are just here at Dunkin' Donuts, just taking a break. We've been standing and we're exhausted. We're not even halfway there. I have no energy. My legs are in so much pain, but you do what you gotta do. This is crazy. We have been standing here for six and a half hours. The line goes way, way back. One of the greatest adventures of my life. Hours and hours of waiting, but guess what? Front row at college game day! Come on, raise your hand! 
Group one. Group one. Oh, it's group two. Group three. Group three. right here. I woke yes, up sir. Tuesday morning in a puddle, but it was worth it. Oh, Best okay. part of the week was honestly just getting to bond with some kids that, you know, I met a month ago, but, you know, Hell yeah. I'm, I'm happy Thursday to know night, now. James yeah. Franklin oh, personally God. handed me a pizza. <laughs> They're missing one. Yeah. This got me insane. This is my first whiteout. This week has been unbelievable on any bill. Yeah. College it's game day here. was nuts. I've been up for like 22 hours straight now. Coffee. A lot of coffee. College, Pennsylvania, where number four, Ohio State, challenges number nine, Penn State, in the midst of a whiteout. 
I am Brian McLaughlin. Alongside me is Tom Shively. Experts have called it the best atmosphere in college football. Former players have called it the best atmosphere in college football. Urban Meyer said in his weekly press conference, I wish they saved the whiteout game for somebody else. The Penn State Nittany Lions take the field. takes a snap, steps up, looking deep down the far side for Johnson. He brings it in with one hand, down to the 17, Jawan Johnson. McSorley calls for the snap, gets it waist high, looking over the middle. He has Hamler, Hamler has a hole, across the 50, to the 10, the 5, touchdown, K.J. Hamler, and Beaver Stadium erupts. Lions up 13-0. Fans know how important this game is, and they can feel the energy. The give goes to Sanders. Ohio State saying the ball came out at the end of the play. The Buckeyes recover a Miles Sanders fumble. They didn't run it Screen pass to Dobbins across the 20. Touchdown, Buckeyes. And Ohio State strikes back. And we will head to halftime. Seven points on the board for Ohio State, but they get the ball here to start half number two. Hands it off inside to Dobbins, who cuts back towards the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State, 14-13, Ohio State. This will be a 48-yarder for Sean Nurnberger. This one to give the Buckeyes a four-point lead here with 6.17 to go in the third quarter. The Penn State fans letting him hear. Nurnberger's kick is up. Misses it. No good from Sean Nurnberger. Pushes it to the right. So we're going to keep it this time. Looking for Pat Fryer within the end zone. Comes down with a touchdown. 20 to 14, Nittany Lions. And this one off to Sanders. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Penn State. 26 to 14, Penn State. Just announced here at Beaver Stadium, 110,889, a Beaver Stadium record. Every single one of them on their feet now for a Buckeye, first and 10. Caught by Benjamin Victor, who cuts back into the 20. Victor to the 10 and into the end zone, touchdown Buckeyes. And the Buckeyes right back within a score. We've got a ball game, all of a sudden. Buckeyes, third and five at the Penn State 20. Fresh off the middle from Penn State Haskins, a screen pass out to Hill. Hill gets the first down, and that's some Hill. Scoots down the far sideline and into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. To the Buckeyes, reclaim the lead 27-26. The wild fourth quarter in this series continues. 2.03 to play. Trying to put together one last clutch drive as he has so often. Sorley in the gun, throws it deep. This looking for Fryermuth who makes the catch. The Nittany Lions are in business. Throwing it deep, looking for Brandon Polk who cannot come up with it. Third down and 14. Penn State McSorley picks up nine, but a fourth down upcoming. Needs five yards on this one with a minute 22 to play. And a timeout called now by James Franklin. I mean, this is the game. It makes sense to, why have them in your back pocket here? Crowd very quiet here as Nittany Lions work. Ohio State showing pressure from the near side. Switches Sanders to his left. Here's the snap. They give it to Sanders and he's stopped. I tell you what, Tom, people are probably gonna be asking questions for years to come. This one will hurt for a while. You know, you struggle together. You wake up, you know, and you're in a puddle of water, and, you know, the neighbors next to you are in your puddle of water. I mean, at that point, it's not about front row seats. When you do it the first couple times, it is about front row seats, and that's fine. Like, that's how we draw people in. Um, but if you allow yourself to be a part of something kind of bigger than yourself, you give yourself an opportunity to be a part of the family that is Nittanyville. I do love getting the great views, but it's, it's, it's a bit more to that. It's a bit more special. 
There's only so many chances to be front row, but also so many chances to be around people that you know, you're gonna be going to weddings to, you know, you're gonna be going on long road trips with, you know, people that you actually care about. It very much was about getting front row seats when I was a freshman that week, first week, and then I like figured it out probably that Wednesday night. Even, it wasn't even about getting front row seats. It wasn't even about meeting football players or meeting the coaches. It was about coming up here to hang out with our, my friends. I wouldn't see myself being anywhere else.